Okay, and our other video that probably you watched is is was how to update the sales price. Um, so a lot of people ask me also, well, how do I update the cost as well? Okay, so they don't have this quick, you know, mass change item prices on the cost side. Obviously, check out our video on how to paste from Excel because there are ways to kind of use the paste from Excel feature to do this. But I'm going to show you how to do it through an IAF file. Now, again, doing it through an IAF file is doing anything, period, through an IAF file. Definitely consult somebody about it because it may or may not be the best way to do it. I have files, as we've shown in some of our other videos or mentioned, is a format that was created in 2004. Okay, and it hasn't been updated really with all the latest releases. So if you go even download from QuickBooks, right, download an IIF format, it says you, you must be using QuickBooks 2007 or later. I mean, this is an old format. <laughs> so definitely check with somebody on our team if you guys are planning on doing this. But here's the how. So I have my list in QuickBooks already. Uh, and I want to be able to go in and mass update not only my sales price, but also my cost. So one way to do that is to come in and we're going to export our list data to IAF file. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose my items list and then say OK. Now I'm going to navigate to where I want to save this file. All right, so you want to really pay attention to where you're saving this file. So I'm going to call it items for updating. 7 2016. I always keep track anytime we do anything like this I say save it it's worth it to save it um, okay there there isn't a place in QuickBooks where we can attach documents for everything that we've like a mass update like this I and mean, we can talk about some workarounds but again I always save these in case you know, I go back six months later and I say you know what what was that price change that we made back in July? Now I have the reference for what we did. Okay, so I'm gonna save it there. All right, so now my items list has been exported. Anytime you're opening an IIF file, you have to be in Excel first. So let me go ahead and open up Excel. All right, and then I'm gonna to choose to open other workbooks down here. I'm gonna to go to my computer, navigate right to where I had that folder and there's my video spreadsheet, but I don't see my IF file here, right? Why isn't it there? That's because anytime you're dealing with IF files, it's not in an Excel format yet. So you need to come down here and choose instead of all Excel files, we want to say all files. And now I can see my items for updating file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and say open. It's going to take me through my little text import wizard here. I can just go ahead and say finish. Okay, because Excel and QuickBooks, they already know uh, how to put these in different cells. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this top portion because really what I want to get down to down is down here in the items area, right? And so seeing the little exclamation point, that's a way to know that we're starting to look at our items list. So all this stuff up top here is information that's in QuickBooks already. By me deleting it off this Excel spreadsheet, it's not deleting it from QuickBooks, it's just deleting off this Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Now, if I scroll down here to the bottom, you can see if I get into some of my group items or my assembly items, they're in kind of a different format. So again, there's some, some other ways that we can uh, mass update these, but the uh, pricing on this, right? So if I'm talking about updating the cost, you do have a cost possibly associated with your inventory assemblies. But when I'm talking about updating the sales price, there isn't a sales price on the group items, okay? So there can be a sales price on the assemblies that we need to update, right? So here's my price and my um, cost field there. So again, watch some of our other videos so you can learn how to uh, update some of these things even though they're in a funky format. All right, for purposes of this video though, I'm just going to focus on my uh, inventory parts here. So I'm going to go ahead, even select from parts down and delete these off the Excel spreadsheet. Again, deleting them off the Excel spreadsheet does not get rid of them in QuickBooks, it just deletes them off the Excel spreadsheet. All right.
So what I care about are these price and cost columns. So ultimately, the format that it's in right now is the format that we want to leave it in, right? We want to leave the columns in the same order with the exact same wording headers for the columns because that's how QuickBooks understands IIF files, okay? All right, but what I care about is I want to update the price and cost. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and insert in here and put in the uh, header, right? The exact same name. Then I'm going to use some Excel functionality in order to update my cost. So let's say again, I wanted to take and update it by 3%. So I'm going to say plus and then choose this cell and then say times 1.03, right? And it gets me to that 3% uh, increase. One of the things too that an Excel feature that you may want to learn is that you want to, if you want to do rounding, so you can say plus equals round, oops, if I can spell, <laughs> round this, right? And so I'm saying round M2 times 0.103, and then I put a comma and I want to round it to two decimal points. So I put two decimal points there and it'll do, well, the rounding for me. Well, obviously uh, on this one, <laughs> uh, the number of digits that you want it to round. So on this one, it must be rounding up. So let's go ahead and say times four. There we go. So it gets me to four. If I'm rounding up to two, it, it's going to bring me up to 584 anyway. So that's why it did that. But again, you can use that round feature, okay, to, to get it rounded up. So if I want it, wanted it round to the nearest dollar, I put in zero, okay? Now, once you have the, the formula in QuickBooks or in Excel here, and you want to copy it down, so when you, you, you click on that cell, then you see that little box in the corner. It's very tiny. Maybe I can zoom in for you. That little box in the corner is very tiny. I can double click on this and it will copy that down for me, right? So it takes it all the way down to the bottom there for me, okay? Now, of course, now in this cell, I now have some calculations, right? So if I were to say, okay, well, here's my price column. Now let me get rid of this it's going to mess up my pricing because right now it's referencing that previous column. So let me hit control Z here to undo. So what you want to do is you want to take the column, copy it, and then go in and do what's called paste special and paste the values. So it replaces, it gets rid of the formula, and now all we're left with is a value. Okay. All right. So price, that's the sales price. We already knew how to kind of mass update that in QuickBooks, but obviously doing it in Excel here, we can have some more functionality, right? It's not just a dollar, flat dollar, or a percentage. Uh, so now let's say cost, okay? Now I could go in and copy and insert an additional column for cost as well, but let's say our stated cost, we expect it to be 33% uh, of our sales price. So again, I'm gonna do a plus column. I'm gonna say round. I'm going to take this number times 0.33, round it to the two decimal point, and then hit enter. So now I have taken, and it does the math for me, rounds it down, so I get my 33% of, of the price is my cost. I can take that little box, double click, so it fills in for me all of my additional costs in here. Okay. And then, of course, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to do the same thing. Copy, paste special, and paste my values. So it leaves me with just the values in there. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to save this. Okay, so it says, looks like, it, you know, it's it. some of the things might be lost in the text format. Do you want to still use this format? I'm going to say yes. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and close out of the document. So when you're dealing with IAF files, the document can't be open. Also, you do have to be in single user mode. Okay, so again, let me just take a peek in here. Look at this first item. Its price is $66. Its cost is $32 right now. So I'm going to come in and say utilities. Now import to IIF file. Choose that same IAF file that we were just editing. 
and it's going to import in. So all of those fields that didn't change, obviously nothing's going to change in there. But now when I come in and I look at my pricing, right, I have my sales price at $68 and my cost is now $22.44. So I've been able to mass update those pricing on the sales side and the cost side. Right? So that's how to use an IIF file to update price and cost.